Hi, this is Nicole Leon with Health, Beauty, and More. And um, the last few days I've been staying indoors because I have, uh, I'm getting over pharyngitis um, viral infection that creates problems with your throat and your ear and uh, kind of knocks you out when you take NyQuil. But um, yeah, I think I'm doing a lot better right now because I don't have that pain in my left ear that I was having. So I think it's on the tail end that, that things are going my way. I just wanted to touch base with you a little bit about citric acid again. I know I did a video on that a long time ago, maybe a couple years ago. And um, what it is, is it's something that is um, found naturally in your body uh, in small amounts. And it is actually um, commonly found in citrus fruits like lemons, limes, and strawberries. Uh, although it's it's a, it's supposed to be helpful to take um, lemon juice in the morning um, just to cleanse and detox your body the first thing in the morning and help your digestive system. Those are the good things. Now, on the contrary, you also have to be aware that too much citric acid is hard on your teeth enamel. So there is a fine line there and you have to watch that balance and you'll know if you have sensitive teeth. If you do, what happens is the enamel starts eroding. Your dentist will probably find, um, tell you to go, go back to the fluoride toothpaste, which I don't like, like to do, but for people with sensitive teeth, sometimes that's the only measure that can help remedy the problem because uh, you can't really completely avoid all the ac acidic foods that are out there. And it seems like the trend these days is to go to eat more alkaline foods, which are more in tune with your body's pH level, which is more alkaline, not acidic. So I did a little bit of reading about the citric acid because I know that it has been, it has had some labels of, of it being harmful to your body, especially since it has something to do with uh, being uh, a, a, not algae, but mold, mold. And um, I know the name of it is like a really long Latin name, like Aspergillus niger or something like that. And, you know, it's commonly found in grapefruits, lemons, limes, uh, or strawberries, and other things like pineapple, tomatoes, and those are all good fruits. In fact, I don't know if you consider a tomato a fruit. I'd, I guess you could. I'm not really sure on that one. But I group the citric acid in there because it is something that's in the tomatoes. It's a common product that people eat reg pretty regularly. Some people don't tolerate tomatoes too well. Uh, they're either, either uh, allergic to it or they cause heartburning problems. So just be aware of that and you know be open to that. <clears throat> but you know when they do canned foods, um, they add the citric acid in there to help extend the shelf life of the foods. Oh, a lot lasts a whole lot longer. And that's just common practice. So I just wanted you to know about that. Now, sometimes um, when we're ingesting these items with uh, citric acid, which is in almost, it's in almost everything, it seems these days, um, but your body will assimilate some of it, but a lot of it will also get absorbed into the cells and just be uh, defecated through the ex excretory system. Now you know how carbonated drinks kind of have that acid lemony kind of sour taste? Well that's the citric acid that's added to them and just just put by putting a straw in your drink can help avoid having more acid erosion on your teeth because you're swallowing directly and not it's not like gargling around your mouth 
So less of it touches your teeth. You might want to try that. That's just one little tip. Also for those that like to drink wine, there, there definitely is citric acid added to the wine. Why did they add it to the wine? To help with determining the quality and the taste. It's supposed to help improve it and uh, preserve it like they do with canned foods and soft drinks. So there definitely is a difference in wines for those of you who are connoisseurs. I wouldn't go so far as to completely uh, eliminate citric acid. You really can't. It's in almost everything and your body has a way of producing a small amount. As long as you're doing everything in moderation, that's the key. And I like to live by that. So that's where I want to um, end this lecture uh, is to just use your common sense. Don't go uh, extremely a high in, in your amounts of uh, acidic foods, but it's okay to combine these things as long as everything is done in moderation. Your body will tell you. Just listen to your body. And if you have problems, then your doctor is the next step to find out what you're doing that might, you might be able to, how you may be able to improve something that's not uh, working well in your digestive system. So, we all have things that change over the years, and that's just life. But I hope you learned something here and enjoy the time uh, you took to, to listen. I appreciate that, and I hope I helped somebody. And if you have any questions, uh, give me a question in the reply section, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Take care. Bye-bye now.